Hi guys, this is Ben from Ben's RPG Pile, and today we're going to show you how to make the Library of Whispers inside the Pyramid of Shadows 4E D&D module. So basically, uh, <laughs> this morning I was watching a TV show called House Crashers, and uh, it's about this guy who, uh, it's on the DIY network, I just had it on his background noise, but basically this guy goes into houses that are uh, and rooms that are livable but could be made much better and tries to turn them around and make them into something unique. Well, hey, that sounds a lot like what we do here at Ben's RPG Pile. So I thought maybe I'll start to rename these uh, little D&D Dungeon Crashers or something like that. But that's what we do when we make these 3D game boards and share them with you. So uh, we're going to show you how we made the Library of Whispers and what we did to put our own personal touch on it. So one of the core components of the Library of Whispers um, are the books, the books and scrolls. Basically, this is a big old area, and it's kind of like a library, and there are these crazy monsters that I'll touch on in a little bit, but they're, they're called Eaters of Knowledge, these crazy-ass monsters that are unique to the module, and uh, they consume and hunt down knowledge and books, anything written down. So obviously, a library needs a lot of bookcases. So, uh, that's a popular D&D uh, RPG accessory. So, I'll kind of show you the different bookcases that the pile has accumulated. Start with uh, Jan Solo. It's a guy on eBay. He's in Europe somewhere. And uh, he makes um, some really nice bookcases. They, they, this is kind of the Lexus of the, of the bookcases you can buy. They're amazingly painted. But they are pricey, and you throw in the old European shipping, which he doesn't give you a break on. That's frustrating. But um, uh, I have a couple of these. I've gotten them for Christmas and birthday and Father's Day gifts. Uh, one of these is like a good 25 30 bucks. So uh, obviously I'm not going to purchase a gazillion of these. But certainly that's a, that's a home run. Okay. Then we're going to talk about another one. Um, and these guys are called uh, Legendary Realms. So when I was at uh, Gen Con the past, uh, whoops, 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 the past year here, the, these bookcases were pre-painted, casted. It uses a kind of a nutty uh, casting material. I'm not sure what that stuff is called. It's very durable. They're not going to break or anything. Um, but uh, he was selling these for like three bucks a piece or something. So boy, did I snatch those up. Uh, I bought quite a few of those at the con. So. Um, it's another kind of bookcase uh, that I'm going to use in the game board. Then there's another guy on eBay called J.A. Hecker. There's Jay. Jay's a good man. Older guy. I think this might be his retirement kind of thing. But boy, he also crafts some great stuff. Okay. There's another one. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. Tell me those aren't great. Uh huh. So I kind of use. I'm uh, going to use these. I bought several of these. Jay's prices are pretty darn reasonable for what he does. Um, you can go, he's got a, his little eBay store has grown tremendously. So I highly encourage you guys to check him out. Of course, I'll have links to all this stuff in the blog post, supporting blog post guys. But I thought I'd just show him off to you real quick on video. So there's good old Jay. Now Jay also has another killer thing. And uh, he also, you can buy um, these individual little it's kind of like a book scroll pack and see he's made these uh, really neat little scroll stacks and book stacks and see that let's see if I can put one in my oh. let's see ooh put that one in my hand oh pretty neat huh guys so uh, I'm going to throw these. These are going to be on shelves and tables and littered on the floor. Um, and the cool thing about the Eaters of Knowledge is uh, they literally lift the words and such right off the page. So when the party goes into this room, you can see a lot of empty pages, and that's going to kind of freak them out. But um, again, I think you can buy this big old pack of scrolls and stuff from uh, J.A. Hecker's store for 
gosh, I want to say it's around 10 bucks, less than 10 bucks. Don't quote me on the price, but I don't know about you guys, but if someone's going to make something that cheap for me and that high quality, I will definitely take them up on it. So there you go. You got your books from Jay. Now, there's another uh, place uh, overseas in Italy, I believe. Lorenzo is who uh, I've dealt with there. And uh, they're a manor house workshop. And they have a medieval furniture line. So uh, Lorenzo makes shelves, right? So I can take some of these books and I can put them on the shelf here. Uh, he's got more uh, little book things. I bought a whole bunch of these. And then he's got solid book shelves. Cool, huh? And then here is the masterpiece. This is what he got me on. <clears throat> Excuse me. He made these cool, bigger books. They look like, you know, kind of Bible, religious, testament kind of awesomeness. So I bought a bunch of those. And he even has these neat stands. So you take a table. It's a J.A. Hacker table, by the way. And then you can put this cool stand on there, and then you just slip the book right in there. How great is that? And uh, um, he also has these cool stands. Beep, bop, boop. You can take those, and you can put the book on there. Nice, huh? Again, pretty cool quality. Uh, really well put together. A uh, little pricey. But, uh, you know, those more unique items, sometimes you just buy buy those because it's a cornerstone of your collection. So, there you go. So, the, those are all the bookcases. Oh, here's another one by, uh, I'll slide this back. See, getting kind of crowded, right? Or no. Another one by Jay. Mr. Hacker. Pretty cool, huh? Using the new uh, Hearst Arts bar set, as a matter of fact. So clean on the back. So, but all of these pieces are going to be in the center of the room. Um, the, the big challenge that I have to do is, uh, uh, I've got a, I need a, it's a big room, but I need to have these in around the room. They're going to kind of make little walls and hallways and, um, uh, barriers and that kind of stuff cover. Right. But I needed to line the outside of the room with something as well. So I'll show you guys how we did that. Oh, and oh, I did want to throw one other uh, plug in there. Uh, Dungeon Master Mark, he also makes bookshelves. Pretty similar to this, to uh, the uh, Legendary Realms guys. Um, I believe he sells them unpainted, also very reasonable. So I highly recommend you guys check out Dungeon Master Mark's uh, eBay store. Um, again, again, I really don't enjoy doing this tedious stuff. So I'll often buy those, and uh, Mark will give you a great deal. And he's a class act. So... I encourage you guys to look at his stuff. So let's look at the solution we came up for the bigger rooms. So this is our map for the Library of Whispers. This is what the uh, authors kind of put in the module. And um, when I first looked at it, I'm like, what the heck is going on? And it turns out that this part right here, this brown part that's kind of encircling the outside of the library, those are all bookshelves, okay? And the monsters actually, some of them sit on top of the bookshelves, because again, everything's better with levels. And so, um, and this is a big room, guys. I can't remember, yeah, it's like 13 squares by, uh, 13 squares tall by 20 squares wide. Big room. How on earth could I make all those different bookshelves? So uh, I decided I need to get creative. And I was thinking, thinking, what am I going to do? And it turns out that there's a, uh, I just did a Google search on paper bookshelves, right? Remember paper, paper, our ally? Paper, water world. So the, uh, uh, there's a, a blog I just happened to Google, and uh, it turns out that's quite a, quite a pretty respectable blog, actually. I just hadn't found it called D4, D6, D8, D12, D12 Gaming Blog. That's a mouthful. And this guy had these paper, sh paper bookshelves that you could fold together. I'm not good at folding. I'm a wreck at it. It's just terrible. It's not one of my skills. Kindergarten was rough for me. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I took his bookshelf template and cut it up and then used part of it to... 
uh, create the bookshelves all around the room without having to spend a month casting and painting bookshelves one by one. So here's how we did it. So you grab yourself a scissors and you take your sheet of paper here and I just want the bookshelf itself. So I really, the part I'm looking for is just this piece. All right, that's all I need. So I do a bunch of cutting on my good old paper cutter and I end up with this. And wouldn't you know it, lo and behold, uh, it's pretty much the exact same height as the risers that you guys have seen me use a million times. This is how I kind of create levels. I have stuff on these PVC pipe uh, risers and then a thin uh, particle board kind of thing and then I just put my tiles on top. But look at that! Perfect! Hey, now those I can print out and make a whole bunch and put these around. My room is going to be this big old square. But see, I can just go like that. Here, I'll try to frame it all in video here. So see, it's going to look like that. Now we're talking. And remember, I'm trying to uh, do the whole Egyptian pyramid thing as best I can in a lot of the rooms. So see, once you butt it up against there, that looks even better. Now, one other thing is I want to go ahead and I've got to get these to, I'm not going to lean them, for God's sakes. Do I not have any refinement in my life? Uh, so I'm not going to just lean them like that. So I, I need to, first I tried blue painter's tape. That didn't work. The stuff uh, falls off pretty fast. But what you can do instead, you get a little uh, uh, pack of Elmer's Tack removable adhesive putty. It comes like this. Looks like a bunch of big long erasers. Then you just take a piece off. I don't know how this stuff doesn't dry out. It's like a miracle. So you just take a little bit like that and grab another little piece like that. Kind of stick that up. All right. See? And I probably would line a few more on there, but I'm gonna I can do this pretty fast when I'm setting up the module. And then see you just kind of press. Gotta get it tight. Press that against there. Get it flush. Oop. Oh, see, I don't have it flush, so it's going to bubble a little bit. This is pretty boring part of the video. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. See, now we're talking. Yeah, I got a little lip there. No problem, because my floor tiles are going to butt up against that. Like so. Take a couple more, just so you guys can see. See? Oh, now we're talking, guys. Now we're talking. See how you can... See, that, doesn't that look... That looks legit, don't you think? Now I just put that all around the room. Now I got bookshelves, and I'm never going to use 400 bookshelves in a room again. The odds are pretty low, so I like that I didn't have to do a ton of time and... um you know, for something that doesn't have a massive replayability. And if I need to, I just cut them a little bit smaller to make them fit the dimensions of the room. Yeah, I can cut. That's the other beauty of what David did. They, uh, uh, he gave me lots of cutting points so that I could get it to work however I needed to. But see, look at that, you guys. Outstanding. So, um, There'll be uh, pictures here at the end of the video, and I'll have lots of nice wide shots for you of what the whole room looks like. But I can tell you right now, this turned out pretty good for the amount of effort I had to put into it. And certainly we want to thank David for uh, being a great member of the community and putting that up there. Did you say that? Next thing we're going to talk about, guys, is in the center of a library, oddly enough, there's this patch, this like grassy square... Um, in the middle of a library, and there's a statue in there, Kapow, of Varelis, who is one of the uh, big uh, main characters of the 
of the module story. And uh, basically, I think you guys have seen this before, uh, long time pile guys. But this is just a Dream Blade miniature, and then repaced on a rebased on a Hearst Arts uh, half statue. Normally, it'd be flush against the wall, but it still works like that. Uh, but basically, I just I'm like, where am I going to get a, a grassy patch? terrain piece and uh, so I did the old dungeon tile trick Wizards of the Coast dungeon tile trick there's my dungeon tile okay just like that and then basically the, so I, the way I get this flush with my um, foam core that my Hearst Arts is mounted on is in order to get that flush I just have my base foam core just like so and I take a little bit of that uh, uh, hardboard stuff and I put that down and then the dungeon tile just sets on top of that and then wouldn't you know it when you set it down it's perfectly flush so uh, there are lots of great dungeon tile pieces um, so this has worked out really well for me but you just put the old statue in there and it's meant to look be a representation of Varelis and I gotta tell you it's kind of close to what she looks like in the modules so that's kind of how I did the statue in the center of the room and you'd kind of also, you know, there'd be bookcases around it, like that kind of thing. But pretty cool, huh? So now we're going to talk minis. Oh, you know how Ben loves his minis. So uh, remember I mentioned that uh, uh, one of the big baddies here is their uh, a custom module in the, in the book, and they're called Eaters of Knowledge. And so uh, I found a uh, Bodak Skulk. I think it's called. I'm trying this new lock focus thing, guys. I hope this works because I do not want to reshoot this video. But uh, there he is. And uh, I'll try to superimpose a picture of the Bodak Skulka in the corner here of this video. I've never done that before, so I'm going to see if I can learn that technique. But uh, let me tell you, this miniature looks a lot like what's in the module, which is pretty awesome. So these are pretty much going to be the soldiers, the... Uh, uh, the I think I'm going to use these as the as the thought bows, so pretty much the artillery miniatures. So I got a couple of those, and again I love it because the group's never seen them before. So there, and then there's also these another eater of knowledge type is called a void blade. And those are kind of meant to be soldier style. So I decided to pull another miniature off the shelf, and that's uh, some some old confrontation miniatures. And I've never used these before, and I'm always trying to use everything in my collection, but uh, these guys are kind of the, um, the melee soldiers of the group, and so um, I thought this, these would be pretty good representation of them as well. So I got three of those, because remember I got a party of six. <laughs> party of six here. Library's ready. And then um, uh, the, pretty much the, the commander of the group is, uh, uh, they, they call it a mind strike. Well, I didn't. I wanted a unique mini, and I thought, you know what? I barely ever get to put mind flayers into the game, so I'm going to use a little uh, legendary encounter reaper mind flayer back in the day, and uh, uh, he's really well painted, very, very great detail, and uh, so he's going to be the main bad guy, kind of lurking behind one of the bookcases, and then for fun, remember that grassy knoll kind of thing we're talking about? I'm going to have that grassy knoll monster turn. So, uh, if anybody steps in that area, uh, here's a dungeon crawler. It's another, another miniature line. A vine will come out, and based on, I'll probably just do like some type of will save kind of thing, but uh, uh, the party can attempt to control the vine, and uh, if they make the save for the top of the round, it'll be green. Well, uh, there will be like a roll-off kind of thing. And then the Mind Flayer, uh, he will roll against somebody in the party. And if he gets control, it's going to go from this green grass thing to this black tentacle evil thing. So each round they're going to compete for the resource. And I'm pretty, I think I'm not going to let it die. Or if it dies, it'll another one just grows out of the ground. But I think that'll be a fun mechanic. So I just have to remember to put that on my little note card, my little Right, Sly Flourish, my little note cards. It's one of his big tips that I use a ton. 
to remind me of that mechanic, but I think that'd be a fun way to do it. So uh, those are the miniatures that we're going to use in the encounter. What's up, fellas? Woo! Everybody applaud! Hooray! Okay. Let's talk treasure real quick. Uh, I always like to have treasure, even if it's one off in a room, there should always be a reward. Everybody loves to get treasure, R rooms and monsters that don't have any treasure. That is Snooze City. Uh, it doesn't have to be some epic magic item, it can be some simple item. And there's actually some nice ones here. Um, they're going to find, buried on the shelves of the library, there'll be two ritual sc scrolls and a bone tube that have kind of protected themselves from the eaters of knowledge. So. Uh, I use my good old Paizo item cards with a clear sleeve and on the back I put all the details of them, okay? And the group has to do a, uh, what is it doing there? I think they're doing an arcane, yeah, an arcana check to try to locate these magic scrolls. It's a tough one, DC 24, um, and if they do 10 minutes of searching through all the books and they beat that 24, they can find these scrolls. So there's a, a scroll of uh, consult uh, mystic sages. That's one. Cool art there. Then there's a scroll of uh, raised dead. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll probably let them also, I made up a bag of books and they'll find a few other books in the library worth five to ten gold pieces. Uh, uh, they can batch them up, throw them in their bag of holding, and they'll get uh, 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 five gold pieces per. But they're just uh, books that the Eaters of Knowledge didn't get to yet. So that's how we're going to do treasure. Pick a card. Any card. Next thing I want to talk about is the entrance to this library. And I was just putting, stacking my hearse blocks one on top of another. And by accident, I kind of created this cool, thick entrance kind of thing. And I'll try to recreate it for you here. Oh, man. Yeah, I hear the gasps. I hear the gasps of excitement and glee. It's a little crooked there, but let's not pay attention to that. Okay, look at this, fellas. So, basically what I was doing, I'm going to break it down for you. I was just trying to figure out how to do this. And I made a bunch of these kind of like sliding drop-in wall pieces. Okay, thanks to my Gen Con DM who came up with the brilliant idea. I take no credit whatsoever. But, uh, so I put this on and I went like this. And then I was like, well... That doesn't fit, so I went like that. I'm like, oh, I gotta stack it up a little. Maybe I'll make it a little thicker. And then, you know, then I drop these in there. And now, I know it, it tilts a little. Nothing's perfect, right? But that's kind of a nice rickety old pyramid feel too. But now, here's the thing. So, inside the Library of Whispers, those Eater of Knowledge guys, they whisper and uh, that's what the group hears, and they're trying to steal words. And so I kind of had it where everybody else in the pyramid was like, stay away from this room. And maybe they built it up. They like reinforced the wall and stone because they didn't want the, the knowledge guys to have their mind stuff break through the wall. They thought maybe a bunch of thick stone would help. And I thought that was brilliant. Uh, so I, I thought that would be kind of cool to kind of, you know, try to convey that in the terrain. And I'm like, hey, you know what else? I'll put a little, put a little vase in there. Not from the Ming Dynasty. I'll just drop that sucker right in there. And then what if I do, like once in a while, someone would come up here and do like an offering. See, I take one of J.A. Hecker's uh, scroll packs there and set it on there. And then slowly the words would start to disappear off that scroll. And, you know, there, maybe there'd be a bunch of other papers sitting on the floor that were kind of empty, you know, blank. But the ones on top were only partially blank. Wouldn't that be cool? So that's kind of how I'm kind of conveying the effect. But that's what my, my entrance is going to look like. And I thought that was kind of neat. That just all happened by accident and 
kind of just thinking of it on the fly. So that's the entrance to the Library of Whisper. So you guys have seen me on, maybe on the blog, you've seen how uh, there's this uh, cool like decoding language hieroglyphic thing that I'm uh, doing, uh, thanks to the help of Bridget, uh, one, of, one of our pile fans who, uh, she came up with this super cool idea on, on uh, hieroglyphics and uh, uh, she allowed me to uh, reuse this in my own game and gave me the files and everything, just uh, she couldn't be a nicer person. Um, but basically, so I need to, uh, I was like, well, how do I do a, uh, a message, a decoded message on this room? And basically what I'm going to do is the, the, the door to the room, uh, remember, they love anything, those monsters love anything written down, word, symbol, picture kind of thing. So I'm not going to let them try to decode because what I basically, I made a little note here on my... DM prep card and it says text on the door the glyphs are faded uh, off the wall like power washed yet surface is cl uh, shiny clean and there's a harsh stopping point so they're going to notice that even the hieroglyphics etched in the stone are starting to wear away on the wall leading up to the room so that's another kind of fun way I'm going to try to convey the craziness of the room, and this is uh, this is their little alphabet cheat sheet that the guys fill in as they learn the symbols. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's a couple sneaky things. Um, uh, a few letters are actually uh, repeated, or a few symbols. See, like that symbol is one letter, but that symbol with another symbol is another letter. That kind of thing. So kind of sneaky. There's some. See, there's another example, right? So uh, this is going to be a fun puzzle that the guys are going to slowly learn throughout the game with a skill challenge they can do on certain rooms. But uh, uh, that's how we're handling the, the language puzzle aspect of this encounter. Real quick, guys, I'd just like to show you, um, um, hey, what does it look like when all my stuff is for an encounter is boxed up and prepped. And basically, I use old shoe boxes to put the train in. I use a Ziploc bag to put the minis, cards, any other little loose stuff in. And then I print out the layout of the module and then I have my note cards. So uh, I, I try to make like four or five rooms in advance because I don't know which way the guys are gonna go in the game. Uh, and so I have them all in these nice little contained sets so that I can just pull it off the shelf based on which room they pick. But I found doing that really helped me stay organized and when I needed to set the room up during the game there wasn't this big long pause while I tried to dig for everything. So uh, see I got photocopy uh, printouts of the uh, room itself there too to remember how I assemble it. But I find this to be a really a handy method with it and it doesn't take too much room or trouble but just something I'd recommend uh, you might Give it a try. Hush a little baby, don't you cry. Mama gonna make you some rhubarb pie. And if that rhubarb pie is too sour, Mama gonna pick you a wildflower. And if that wildflower wilts, uh, Mama gonna make you a pair of stilts. And if that pair of stilts ain't steady, Mama gonna Gonna make you a bowl of spaghetti. If that spaghetti's not al dente, Mama gonna make you a horn of plenty. And if that horn doesn't have the right fruit, Mama gonna get you a two-piece suit. 
And if that two-piece suit isn't the right material, mama will give you cereal. And if that cereal's not low carb, mama gonna give you some more rhubarb. So hush, little baby, don't you moan. It's been 30 years of a prairie home.